Well, it's always great to welcome Tom Emmerich back to MSU today. Tom is the Chief Operating Officer of Shoe Pan and the President of Shoe Pan Recycling. Tom, great to see you. Yeah, you too, Russ. Thank you for your continuing support of MSU today and Spartan Athletics. Much appreciated. Thank you. Tell us what Shoe Pan is, what Shoe Pan Recycling is. Remind people, what is Shoe Pan? What's the mission? It's becoming a more difficult question to answer all the time as we've experienced tremendous growth in the last five years. Uh, we've gone from about 400 employees to 650 employees. Um, a lot of really exciting stuff and an exciting industry. So, But in a nutshell, we're, we're an aluminum uh, scrap processor and marketer of materials and an aluminum and plastics distributor, manufacturer and distributor of, of products. Um, companies 52 years old, I believe now. It's over 50 years. Um, Mark Chupin is, is the primary owner, and he's got uh, three children that are uh, that are deeply involved in the business as well. We're headquartered in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and we are now doing business in over 25 countries. Uh, so our, our footprint has expanded tremendously, and our future seems to be really, really bright. we got to work hard. we got to keep right. working at it. But, uh, yeah. And what would you say are some of the current issues facing Chupin and the recycling world? Sure. Well, you know, I probably should be, we're, we're a family-owned business, yes. so uh, uh, private, and uh, uh, the ownership is really tremendous and done a great job. Right. Mark Shupan right. is yeah. a diehard green and white Spartan, absolutely. too. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, you know, that being said, we're no different than the rest of the country, and every business is experiencing all the same challenges. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, finding good people, Finding any people is a real, real challenge. I guess we have, you know, I think our unemployment rates around three and a half percent, very, very low. It's the same percent that it was when we uh, when we went into the pandemic and coming out of the pandemic. I think we're kind of back to where we were, and people are wondering, geez, what's you know, where are all the people? I think the people are working, <laughs> that a lot of work for sure. Uh, we're just kind of back to where we were, and it's been a real challenge to get people. Uh, to to enter any business, which is interesting to say the least, but we're all experiencing that. We're all exper experiencing increased operating costs, uh, so that's a big challenge for us. The cost of fuel going up and energy costs are, are up significantly. Um, and you know, not taking any position one way or another, it's just a reality. So those are the primary challenges we're dealing with uh, in business. Um, and then, as if you look at the aluminum industry. That's a little different story, which is exciting for us and for our future. Um, certainly, uh, we've had a little bit of a slowdown as we go and as we're going into twenty twenty three. But the uh, you know the forecast for the aluminum industry is very very strong, and uh, I think during the pandemic we kind of had some ramp up for because there was a shortage of aluminum sheet plate uh, coil etc. and um, there was a big ramp up, so there's there's a pretty strong supply now. So that's slowed down a little bit, but that doesn't change the industry's forecast for the next five years plus. They're looking at five percent growth um, each year, and and then you might, if I'm rambling too much, tell me. No, to what do you attribute that demand <laughs> rise in demand for aluminum? Yeah, so so this is I tell tell all of our employees. And anyone that's willing to listen is that uh, despite some of the headwinds we're facing as an industry and as a business, the future is really, really bright. And the reason for that is because the aluminum industry is looking to grow, as I mentioned, 5% a year for, for the next five years. You know, does that that's actually significant? Yeah, it's, it's very significant. Um, so, you know, the, the primary contributing factors to that is the industry's desire to make more green metals. And green metals means uh, lower carbon footprint in the manufacturing process of aluminum sheet, plate, coil, et cetera. So um, the way to do that is to is to uh, for the mills uh, to manufacture their products or their, you know, the, the aluminum plate and get whatever out of out of scrap. Um, and scrap is a much cheaper product to manufacture than primary aluminum. So there's a huge focus on using more scrap and to make more uh, more green metals. And then add to that the um, plastics in the waterways is a huge mm -hmm. issue, and the aluminum industry has really looked at that as an opportunity to try to grow their footprint and uh, demonstrate to the uh, uh, to the um, marketplace that our metal is clean, it's efficient. And uh, you don't have the problems with our product that you do with some of the other 
packages. And Tom, how was our very popular bottle return bill doing? But I, I think it's very popular. But you said there's actually, since the pandemic, been a decrease in people returning them for the dime. I'm, I'm confused there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and it's, why would that be? Yeah, yeah, that, all that, that that's a million dollar question. But the um, first of all, let me say that that uh, you know this is kind of old information because we're we're moving into 2023. But uh, you know when the bottle bill was was uh, shut down for 12 weeks during the pandemic that had a huge impact on human behavior and and the consumer's behavior uh so what is troubling um well let me, before i say what's troubling let's talk about the positive okay. like, like uh, uh the industry and in particular i'm really proud of of what we at Chupan and uh and on our our partners tom or north america uh, did to um to work with the industry during the shutdown and then getting it back online uh, we, it took us about 20 weeks, uh, 20 to 25 weeks to really clean out retail stores as, as the, as the system came back and people started to flood their, their retailers with the containers that they've been sitting on. Um, so first of all, from a, from a logistical operational standpoint, we did an amazing job mm -hmm. as an industry to, to, to get, to get caught up. So I don't want to uh, not acknowledge well that. Well said, yeah. So. But what's happened since? So prior to the pandemic, it's like uh, 2019, the return rate, the deposit return rate was about 88%. Prior to that, it had always been more than 90%. Um, coming out of the pandemic, the, the year during the pandemic of 2020, uh, it was like 74%. And then 2021, I thought we'd see a bigger uh, bigger jump back up and, and came in at like 75 percent and uh, and then this year we're looking very close to like that 75 to 77 percent range i don't know we won't know till probably april or march of next year but it's troubling to say the least so so what's happened that was your that yeah, what's was your happening question. to that 25 percent that um, isn't and, and i wish i had the magic answer yeah. um i think i think some folks just got used to not taking them back and they're putting them at curbside or they're or they're they're landfilling them which is really a sad yeah, story. let's hope they're at least in the recycling bin yeah, yeah. At, at a minimum yeah. um and uh um but i think i think that uh without uh without getting too uh judgmental on anyone because i hey we're all been a very difficult time yes. through the pandemic and since then and managing business i mentioned labor shortages and, and the cost of running operations is, is tough so you know retailers who've always been very um opposed to the deposit system for for understandable reasons uh have not necessarily coming out of the pandemic made it real easy and convenient and that's one of my four easy like we're going to get to that yeah that uh that uh um, you know, they've, they've, they've shut their bottle rooms down more often. They've, uh, um, you know, it, there's cleaning issues. I get yeah, all that. Right. But, but it's just been a little less convenient for folks to take it back. And then there's some smaller retail stores that we know of uh, or that we know, uh, maybe not know of, but we know they're, they're they're just not taking back empties like they used to. So, again, it gets to that convenience thing. And if, if I'm a person that needs my dime and uh, I take it to a store that says we're not taking them back right now or we're uh, we're not taking them back at all, which in some cases that's happened. You know, what are you going to do? You know, you're going to drive to the next retail store. A lot of people do. I guess I thought if you sold don't. it, you would be required to take it. You back. are required. Okay. If you sell it, it's state law that you have to take it back. You sell that container. Not that that not that individual container, that, that right. brand, that product. Um, so, yeah. So there is. um um, an effort by the, uh, I think, uh, Eagle, and uh, I know the um, uh, Attorney General's office is working diligently to try to communicate with uh, the populace that it is a state requirement and uh, retail stores that are not taken aback have to. And so we need to let we need to let let the AG's office know when somebody is turning down if they are. Yeah, talking with Tom Emmick from Shoepan on MSU today and. Tom, what about, we've talked in the past, Michigan lags its Great Lakes partners in recycling rates. And last time we talked, there were some bills that were maybe going to make it part of the problem. I guess it's cheaper for some municipalities to just throw stuff away than recycle it. Where are we on improving overall recycling in Michigan? Well, a lot of times we get we get the two issues com confused, okay. right? You have municipal recycling and then you have the deposit law. Um 
our position on that, or really my position, is that you need both. I mean, both can and should work. You know, I think it's six of the state of the country's top ten municipal recycling uh, rate uh, states have deposit laws, so they both can work in unison. Um, where where are we at? There 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 was actually bills that were being sponsored by the beverage industry to make some changes to the deposit law to. Um, um, but you know, challenges. They can go just, anywhere. It, it, I guess. It, not not yet. Okay. I mean, but I think there's still some a constant some effort. Yeah, and there there are things that that would you know help fund the current uh, logistics of the deposit system, uh, so that uh, uh, the ability of, of of the shoe pans of the world or uh, uh, to pick up and 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 uh, process containers on a consistent basis. I mentioned costs are going up, and those bills are kind of designed to to help reinvest in the infrastructure of the deposit system that's is so popular. And you mentioned earlier you know, the popularity of it. Every time we do a, a poll or a poll has been done on the popularity of the Michigan deposit law, it comes in 92 plus percent of Michiganders, you know, love the deposit system. Um, has that waned over the years? Probably a percent or two, but, you know, that doesn't change. But the reality is it's still a very, very, very popular piece of legislation, and it works really, really well. And we still believe we have the most efficient system in the in the country um, and that's because retailers and distributors and, and recyclers have worked together to streamline it over the years. So that's exciting. That hasn't changed. Uh, but the declining volume has made it more challenging. The increased costs have made it more challenging. So to go back to your question on bills that were being introduced, that, that, that's what we, you know, we have we'd spoken in favor of. Uh, um, supporting distributors. It's their program. We have to remember, you know, they're the ones that are responsible for initiating the dime and they're the ones responsible to make sure everything gets picked up on time and da 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 da. Um, so uh, those bills have not gone anywhere in the last, uh, really, the, the last year, but I yeah. believe they're still working at something. Okay. So hopefully we'll see some action this year. And Tom, you said the word efficient a few seconds ago. Please, I always ask you to share your four E's of a successful recycling program because sure. people don't think about this all the time. No, no, it's, well, and uh, just to, for the folks that are listening to this, you know, my last name is Emmerich. It begins with an E so many years ago, and I was addressing my, my team. I was trying to think, well, what does sustainability really mean? And I'm trying to come up with a cute way to, to say what is what equals sustainability. So I thought... My last name beginning with the E, I thought, well, there's pretty much four primary things that you need to have to, 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 to be have a successful recycling program or to be uh, sustainable. And so I came up with my four E's, which are education, which people need to know what to recycle and where to recycle it. So that's kind of like one of the first steps. Uh, and then it has to be easy which we talked about convenience and so convenience is why the deposit system works so well return to retail is extremely convenient for the consumer so yeah um so it's education ease and then you have to have efficient logistics and operations which that's where shoe pan really kind of stepped in and helped distributors develop programs or processes and operations to efficiently handle deposit containers um and then the last one you have to have economically viable markets so those are my four E's, and uh, I don't know that you have to have them in any particular, uh, you know, you have to have them all. Yeah, in that, whatever order, yeah. Right, I guess, uh, right. So, Tom, I mean, as we wrap up, just what would you like people to know again about shoe pan and, and just encourage people to recycle more and, and get, get more educated on this? Well, I think, I mean, I, I could talk forever, right. so, but I don't want to do that Go right in. Uh, and, and And this is less about shoe pan than it is about the state of our yeah. current deposit system. I think the real important message is to folks is, is if you are not taking your containers back today, please reconsider. We need to get those containers back into the system. And I don't think... That I think a lot of folks don't understand. Every container that goes unredeemed, that dime goes to the state, which is fine. The state's made millions of dollars in the last two years for every container that hasn't been re redeemed. And I don't think the state wants that, per se. Of course, everybody wants the revenue, but at the same, cause it, but at the same time, it's not 
great for the long-term viability of of our deposit system. So if you if um, I'm not saying the deposit system's not going anywhere. It's going to be around, I believe, forever in Michigan. But to, for it to be as efficient as possible, as, uh, we need folks to take their containers back to their nearest retailer. And if, if, if a store or a retailer is not taking containers back, just know that you're, it's within your right to say, hey, you have to, by state law, take this back. And, and if you really want to get bold about it, contact the AG's office and say, Hey, this this location is not taking it back, and I, I apologize to any retailer that might be offended by that. That is not my intent, but my intent is to continue to maintain the most efficient program in the country and and to maintain the success that uh, that we've had as a state of a program that we should all be really really proud of. Yeah, well said, Tom, and uh, thanks again for coming in for the conversation and for your support. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Tom Emmerich is Chief Operating Officer of Shoe Pan and President of Shoe Pan Recycling. Much more about everything we've talked about online and to apply for a wonderful job with a wonderful company, shoepan.com, S-C-H-U-P-A-N.com. And I'm Russ White. This is MSU Today.